Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University, a one stop shop to learn all the technologies. So, so far we have uh, developed a WordCon program and also we have seen some of the disadvantages with the um, existing uh, WordCon program where we have hard coded the, um, uh, the deployment mode by using setmaster method which is not a very good practice. Uh, it has to be dynamically determined um, and uh, the uh, the value should be changed uh, depending upon the environment it is running. And also while uh, processing data from input path uh, and storing data to output path, we are not doing any validations, which is not a very good practice. For that reason, it's uh, you have to uh, keep in mind that these things uh, are planned from day one of the implementation of your project. Otherwise, you will end up uh, uh, spending a lot of time in refactoring the code uh, at the latter point in time. And also, you might end up with some bugs. Um, uh, and it's not a very good uh, uh, way of developing the projects. That being said, uh, let's take the first problem. The first problem is we should not pass all the parameters as arguments. Input path and output path make sense to be passed as arguments, but others things like the deployment mode uh, if you if the program is a jdbc program if it has to connect to the source database the host name of the source database the port number of the source database the username password database name all these things have to be externalized we will see those things um, uh, at the time when we actually develop the jdbc programs also but uh, i'm just giving an example where the externalization is key okay and uh, uh, for that purpose, we need to understand how we can externalize and what are the APIs Scala or Spark provides for you to actually use as part of your application development. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, we will see that uh, first we need to create a plugin. There is a plugin called uh, TypeSafe Config plugin. It's a Scala based plugin wherein if you have a directory in a particular uh, format and if you have uh, files with uh, with particular name uh, it can actually load the files automatically by invoking a small uh, uh, function call so first we, what we have to do is we have to define these dependencies as part of the build.sbt so i'm going on to the terminal and my code is under research live demos big data spark scala and then demo spark scala okay here we have build.sbt as part of uh, earlier program we only uh, specified spark dependencies now we are trying to define the dependency for type safe config okay and uh, if you want further information about uh, TypeSafe config, you have to go to Google and then search for GitHub TypeSafe config and hit enter. It will take you to the appropriate URL and uh, you can see the details over here. Okay. Let me see whether it is Scala. Yeah, it is Scala example. So you can get all the dip, uh, all the information over here. Okay, so you can see the examples also. So you have to just import the config factory. You have to create a config factory object and load and run the load command. Then it will go to the resources directory under source main or whatever uh, uh, directory we have created for resources and from there it will try to look for files with the name application.conf or application.json or application.properties or reference.conf so these are the um, these are the files which it, it it will look for okay if there are any files with that name it will automatically load those things if if there is a different name uh, or if if it is a different path then whatever path you uh, you, uh, you have created as part of your project you have to invoke the load function with the appropriate path sometimes we want to keep the uh, uh, external properties outside of our uh, uh, jar file in that case you have to create a 
common path in development testing and production environment which is outside our class path and you have to give the fully qualified path with the file name to load okay so here let me save this one and then immediately you have to run the fbt package command so that the uh, the plugin will be um, available for our uh, project in Scala IDE. This project will be opened in uh, Scala IDE and we will be making the changes which is already opened here. We just have to refresh and the APS will be available for us to use. Without updating the plugin and without running a SBT package, if you try to use the typesafe config uh, or uh, config factory, then it will uh, throw some errors it will fail because uh, the uh, the classes are not available or the apis are not available as part of the core api now the compilation is done means sbt package is done okay and then what we have to do is we have to see if there is resources under source main so this is the default path which we typically create but you can customize so in this case i'm creating src main resources in the current location so now src main will have scala as well as resources earlier there is only one scala directory now it has both scala as well as resources directory once you create the resource directory if you look into the dot class path file if you run ls hyphen altr command here if you look into this one the, um, uh, the output of the ls hyphen altr command there is a dot class path file here and if you open that file you can see that there is only one source directory source main scala okay because we ran sbt package but we didn't tell that um, uh, we we didn't uh, tell that uh, tell the details about the change to eclipse for that reason once you create the directory you have to run sbt eclipse command once you run the sbt eclipse command which will return very fast you have to open the dot class path again and you should be able to see the new source also source main resources okay and then you save it come here just refresh and uh, you can see there is a directory called source main resources here so here i want to create a file with name application dot properties Okay, now this application properties will have the key value pairs of all our properties. The first one is deployment mode equal to local. Okay, once we make that change, what we have to do is we have to go here. First, we have to import import com dot type safe dot already it is able to recognize the and the uh, the packages config dot config factory we have to import this one and then you have to create config object well app cons that is the name of our uh, uh, application configuration okay Th this one is spark configuration this one is our application configuration the changes which we want to push as part of uh, our application while uh, to use it as part of the life cycle of the application okay here you have to say new spark sorry new config factory dot Let me see the code base. I, I didn't remember. I already have it in our uh, okay. Just config factory dot load, not new. 
we don't need to create the object config factory is the abstract class we should not create the object with this hence dot load okay i'm not sure why it is uh, i think probably this one will solve the issue still it is complaining let me see okay here i i just no need to put the double quotes yeah now it is working okay now we actually uh, created the app conf before uh, um, getting into further details let me uh, validate that we are able to read the configuration parameter with its deployment mode so i am just moving the conf uh, object creation one one line down and here what you have to do is app conf dot get string and our parameter name is deployment mode let us validate whether the name is correct or not yes deployment mode let me validate my program also here it says deployment master yeah let me change it to deployment uh, master okay here first i'm changing it to master and then as part of the program also i am changing it to changing it to master so now what we can do is uh, first we need to delete the directory in the output uh, path let me actually get it from there from here itself go to run as go to run configurations i have updated these parameters as part of my last video so this is the path which was already created i am deleting that directory okay now click on run it should still uh, run in the local mode without any issues so now it is successful you can see that there are no errors okay and here you can also say ls hyphen ltr copy paste that path and see there there is that part hyphen 0000 file is already created which will have the word count so we have successfully integrated um, the uh, the external resources using the type safe config package uh, and uh, we are now uh, capable of reading the externalized parameters from from the uh, properties file such as application dot properties typically if you have uh, uh, as part of source main resources we will create parameters like this dev dot prod dot deployment master equal to let's say yarn client and then um, the program will be passed with the three parameters the third parameter will determine whether it is a dev related uh, 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 whether we are trying to run in development or prod and then using this uh, identifier we can easily uh, uh, get the properties related to dev or prod using the same resources file okay for example here instead of saying uh, app conf dot get string uh, what you can what you can say is app conf dot get conf dot get config okay and i want to get dev configurations and then get string deployment master okay now 
we, even though um, uh, even though we are reading the same file in this case first we are actually trying to identify all the um, all the configurations related to dev so as long as you have all the dev related configurations um, like this uh, dev dot deployment master dev dot jdbc url or jdbc host dev dot username dev dot password etc you will be able to extract all the dev related parameters like this now this one has to be parameterized here i will be passing it as a third parameter which it tells whether the program should be running in development or in production and then we have to say run as go to run configurations and here in the arguments you have to say whether it is dev or prod again we have to delete the directory here because we are not still handling the uh, input path and output path gracefully we are just focusing on the configurations uh, every time we have to delete the directory to rerun so that it does not complain that directory already exists now you can see that the program is successfully executed that you can validate by running ls-ltr command you can see it here now now i can actually ship it to uh, the remote hadoop cluster and then I can give the input path, output path and uh, uh, the third parameter as prod and automatically it will pick the prod.deployment master which is the ARM client. So in dev the same program will be running in local mode and in the prod the same programming will be running in the YAN, YAN client mode. So this is how you have to externalize the parameters. This is one of the way um, you can uh, decide uh, how you want to use it and then you need to understand the capabilities of this package and see whether it can uh, suit your design and then you have to inherit the uh, types of config and also the design you have decided and then you have to start developing the applications it is very important to uh, to understand this from the beginning itself so that you don't uh, end up refactoring the code after a, a good amount of code is already developed which can cause uh, surprises uh, and bugs continuous box uh, for some time okay for that reason you have to plan it from uh, earlier part of your application life cycle okay so that being said i hope you are enjoying the content as part of the next video we will see how to handle the input paths and output paths more uh, more gracefully and start uh, um, implementing projects um, using uh, uh, additional uh, packages still we will be using word count itself as an example but you will see few more apis and few more features which you need to understand as part of the development life cycle that being said i hope you're enjoying the content of the uh, course if you like it or if you have to provide the feedback or if you have to give the rating please do so it will help me a lot to reach out to more audience that being said thank you bye